All right, in this lesson, I want to continue expanding on the ideas introduced in the previous lesson by showing you how we can combine the syntax for searching for several occurrences of a character with a special regex character. So no longer just an alphabetic character, but something like a space or a digit. So for example, let's say I have a string like this, hello, followed by three spaces, and then the word goodbye. How can I identify this chunk of space? Well, what I can do is I can use my slash S that indicates white space. And right now it's matching any space whatsoever. So there are three matches and I can combine this with the curly brace syntax introduced in the previous lesson. For example, I can provide my curly braces and put the number three in here to specify that I'm looking for exactly three occurrences of white space in a row. Right? And I can combine this with any of the syntax introduced in the previous lesson, such as three or more, or such as any number of white space between three and seven, et cetera. Right? So we can combine this curly brace syntax with anything in front of it. It doesn't just have to be an alphabetic character. Here's another example. Let's say I have a string with a bunch of numbers, one, two, three, followed by a space, four, five, six, seven, followed by a space, seven, eight, nine, and another space, zero, one. And let's say I want to identify clumps of four digits in a row. Well, what is our regex character for a digit? It's going to be slash D. So right now it's going to match all of them, but how do I tell it exactly four in a row? Well, what I can do is provide my curly braces and specify the number four. Four occurrences of a digit in a row is only going to match this thing right here, four, five, six, seven. So here's a practical example of this. Let's delete everything we have here and here. And let's say I have a message that I received that's been transcribed for me for my business. And the message reads something like this. I can be reached at 555-123-4567 and I'd appreciate a call tomorrow. Again, my number is 555-123-4567, thank you. So maybe we've transcribed something like a customer complaint or a customer call, and we want to be able to extract their phone number. That is a perfect use case for regex. So how can we write a regular expression to capture this phone number? Well, we can write the logic of a phone number. We're gonna begin with three digits in a row. So I can begin with slash D for a digit, and we want exactly three occurrences of a digit in a row. And then what do we want after that? A dash, right? So we're gonna put a dash right here. And then what I want is another occurrence of exactly three digits in a row. So slash D again for digits and exactly three of them in a row. So now you'll notice it's gonna start matching the beginning of these numbers. And of course these numbers are based on how numbers are used in the United States. So apologies if it's different around the world. But now we've captured the first chunk and we need to specify another dash after that batch of three digits. And finally, we close the number off with four occurrences of a digit in a row. So once again, slash D for a digit, followed by the curly braces to indicate exactly four. And now notice that we've matched both of our numbers right here. We can use that with something like Python to extract that logic, save it to a data set, you know, make it a note to call it, you know, save it to a list, etc. That's how you start to combine regex with the functionalities that are available in Python. So what if we don't have a dash, but we have something like a space? For example, here, I'll replace my dashes with spaces and I'll replace my dashes with spaces right here. And you'll notice our regular expression is no longer matching anything, but that's not a problem. We simply have to alter the expression. So now in place of a dash here, what do we want? We want an occurrence of white space. How do we mark white space? We can do slash S, lowercase s. All right, and right here, what do we want? After our second occurrence of three digits in a row, we also want to mark white space. So I'm going to say slash S again. That is one white space character, which is going to match these uh, representations in our string. Well, what if it gets even more complex? Let's say there's any number of white space characters. Maybe there's a whole big gap of spaces in here and here, maybe something like this, maybe something like this, right? Who knows how our transcribing system is getting these phone numbers as they're coming in? Well, with regex, it's not a problem because now what we can say is three digits in a row followed by any number of white space followed by three more digits 
followed by any number of white space, followed by exactly four digits. So what I can do here is after my slash S for the white space, I can put one comma and close it off. That indicates exactly, or not exactly, at least one white space or more, right? Remember one followed by a comma is one or more of that character. In this case, it's a um, empty space, white space. Similarly, right here, slash S is only gonna be looking for exactly one occurrence of white space, but we can provide curly braces and specify at least one occurrence, right, with one comma. And so now this is where we start to see the complexity of regex because it's getting kind of ugly right here, but this is how it looks like in the real world. We're starting to build up a lot of complex interwoven logic for describing how we're looking for something in a text string, right? Three digits in a row, followed by one or more white space in a row, followed by exactly three more digits in a row, followed by one or more white space in a row, followed by four digits in a row. And hopefully now you're seeing the dynamic nature of patterns and how they can be really, really powerful in targeting specific sequences in strings. All right, so more on this in the upcoming lesson, but hopefully this has been a good summary lesson to tie together all of the concepts that we've been talking about in this section of the course. I'll see you in the next lesson.